Grandkids are awesome. A few years ago, we were on a family vacation down in Tennessee, and we had a granddaughter and a grandson uh, with us on this trip, and they were only two years old, and uh, they were running around, playing, enjoying the area, and uh, our grandson uh, had fallen outside, and we bring him in. He's got a gash on his knee, and he's crying. He's, he's hurting, and and uh, I went and got my first aid kit. That's something I, I've done and uh, came in and, <clears throat> you know, and, and daddy's holding him and trying to console him and he's over the sink and, you know, blood's dripping down and he's not sure what's happening to him. He knows he's hurt and he's got an owie, but Papa comes to the rescue as well. Uh, daddy's got him in his arms and Papa comes in with his first aid kit and, you know, rinses the wound and, and, uh, <clears throat> cleans the wound and then I, I have some strips and um, uh, suture strip type things and uh, I patch it all up and and uh, fix him all up so he can actually uh, still move around and, and run around and, and uh, he healed up fine but it's amazing what something like that does for a child because all of a sudden Papa can fix it Papa's the one to go to for an owie Papa can take care of you in this way. And that's kind of cool for a papa, uh, for sure. Um, but you know, when I, I tell that story, because I believe for you and I, gratitude is like that. Uh, you know, I didn't actually do the healing, um, but I was able to bring the things together to allow the healing to take place. And I think gratitude is a lot like that for you and I. Gratitude is the conduit that allows God to come into our stress, into our hurting, into our pain, into our depression, whatever it is we're dealing with. Gratitude is that healing salve that allows God to do some wonderful work. And uh, I just wanted to read from Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 9. It says, Don't worry about anything. Paul is writing to the church of Philippi, uh, Philippi here, and he wants them to be encouraged. And that's just the word I have for you today is, is, is gratitude. And let that be an encouragement to you. As Paul shares, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. It's with thanksgiving. It's adding gratitude because that is such an important element, he says, with thanksgiving, then you, will, uh, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything you can understand. The peace of God will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And what a joy it is to have God's peace come into your life and just bring a calm in amidst a, a, a case of anxiety, and amidst a, a feeling of just being down and low, a feeling of darkness to let God come in and His peace reign and guard your hearts. Isn't that beautiful? He goes on to say, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Keep doing these things. Practice the spiritual disciplines then the God of peace will be with you. And I love this passage because it reminds us to use gratitude, experience gratitude in our lives, to bring, uh, to be that salve, to allow God to work. But it gives a blessing and a promise with that. It says, the peace of God will be with you. And not only that, it ends with saying, the God of peace will be with you. So not only do we have the peace that only God can provide, but we have God himself present with us and what a beautiful promise that is and so I encourage you to consider gratitude you know science has been discovering what what God has already revealed and what God has already designed over and over and over again studies come out and are revealing the the evidence and the truth of what gratitude can do for a person study after study shows that gratitude <clears throat> helps uh, people become healthier and happier in their life. It helps with moods. It, it, it changes their sleeping uh, into a better sleeping. 
Um, and it just goes on, and, the list goes on and on of the benefits of gratitude. Science and medicine are recognizing that and even emphasizing that. The late Jack LaLanne <clears throat> was a fitness and nutrition guru, and he's gone now. But at the end of one uh, beautiful interview, um, he uh, was asked, what should people do if they're wanting to be healthier? What should people do first thing in the morning? Of all the things Jack LaLanne could have said, he said this, and I quote, he said, a healthy person always starts by counting their blessings. Of all the things, count your blessings was his great wisdom to offer because he knew the power of gratitude. Even with all that he put into his health and nutrition, fitness, and all the benefits he got from that, still at the primary place in his life was counting his blessings. How beautiful is that? So I wanted to encourage you today that in those times of anxiety, in those times of, of, uh, <clears throat> of depression, in those times of darkness, in those times of, of conflict, to do this, to make, put this into practice. And that is one, slow down. Just slow down and then relax. Sit back, sit down, slow your breathing down and relax. And then once you've done that, I want you to list and start a gratitude journal and list out daily five to 10 things you're thankful for. And especially in those times of darkness, especially in the moments of anxiety, turn your minds and focus on what you are grateful for, what you are thankful for, and make a list and write those things down and then talk to God about them. What a beautiful practice, what a beautiful discipline to enter, uh, to put into your life and let God enter into your situations. Slow down, relax, write down the things you're thankful for and talk to God about it. That's my nugget for you today. God bless you.